The goal of this video is to help you outsource your online arbitrage purchasing. We are gonna go through the three phases on how to do this confidently, to do this safely, and give you the certainty and clarity that you are going to be protected and your business will be able to scale to the next level. I'm not just gonna share with you the, the nuts and bolts, the strategies on how to do this, the step-by-steps how to do this. We're also gonna go underneath the surface too. I'm gonna to share with you some of the, the personal challenges that I had, the, the personal, from a psychology point of view, what prevented me from outsourcing purchasing for eight months back in 2016, when I was doing this for the very first time, and I was doing everything myself with my team, and I experienced a lot. So this video is gonna be a fantastic video for you if you're interested in, I wanna outsource purchasing. I know that's what I need to do, okay? So if this is the first time seeing me, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I've got so many videos about online arbitrage on this channel. I've got playlists which will really help you out. But let's begin. So outsource purchasing, we're gonna go really deep within this video and I'm gonna leave no stone unturned because this is something that many of us may not want to do, but some of us do want to do. It all depends on what your ultimate goal is. It depends on what you're trying to achieve in your business. If this is, if you wanna build your e-commerce business, your online arbitrage business on Amazon, and you want to really take it to that next level for you to be able to expand your business, then this is gonna be an essential, uh, a, a pivotal step that you take. And allow me to explain why. So, I'm gonna do this as visual as possible because I'm a visual person, this is how I learn, so hopefully um, this will help you, right? So, in your online arbitrage business, you need to see it from a, a bird's eye systematic point of view. Allow me to explain. So, for me, I knew that online arbitrage could be systemized based on the stages of the business. And I actually called these the major systems, okay? These are the major systems. Now, there's three major systems that for all of us, that if, we want, if we're aspiring to have this as a business, and you as a business owner, that you can spend your time building other things, advancing your business to the next level, going into wholesale or private label or starting whatever sort of entrepreneurship journey that you want to go on. The major systems in online arbitrage are as follows, okay? The first one, number one, is sourcing, okay? This is sourcing. Number two, the second major system is purchasing. And then the third major system in online arbitrage is shipping. These major systems, through the definition of those major systems, are if any of these pillars any of these major systems, if they stop, then your business stops. I think that makes sense, right? This is what I was doing back in 2016 on my whiteboard and I was thinking to myself, what systems, what are the critical systems that need to happen or my business stops? And I brought it down from a simplicity point of view. I got it down to sourcing, purchasing and shipping. Now these three stages, the more you source, the more likelihood you're gonna purchase, the more you'll ship. Whether you end up having lots of, lots of different methods of sourcing, which we're not gonna talk about in this video, but we will have a video that you can check down uh, multiple ways that you can source in your business. Or shipping, this is where we start talking about warehouses, talk, start talking about teams and um, prep services. But this particular stage, this is like the keystone this is the fundamental stage. This is the purchasing stage, which is the, in many ways, the make or break 
of your business. If you think about it, the success and failure of your business is what you decide to purchase. Because if you purchase bad products, then it doesn't matter whether you ship those bad products, you can ship bad products, good products, you can ship whatever you want here, but if those, those products that you've purchased are no good, you're going to have capital stuck in stock, okay? Which means this section here is one of the most challenging um, major systems to actually outsource. Many people, and many of us, will quite happily get help and outsource sourcing, and many of us will quite happily get help with shipping. But a much smaller percentage of people outsource purchasing. And it's those that are able to go to that next level and scale their business to the next level and actually have a business that they're working on and not in, that is a critical step that everybody has to overcome. This is like the, the barbed wire. This is where a lot of uh, psychology comes in, a lot of fundamental systems come in, the protection for you and your business comes in. Because that, going back to this can make or break your business. Okay, so purchasing, this is what this whole video is all about. Purchasing, if you're going to outsource purchasing, you, you've got to see it from, there's two, there's two points of view, right? The first point is confidence, okay? Confidence. When you think about when you're purchasing in your online arbitrage business and you're reviewing all your leads that are coming in, you're the one that has gone through lots of experience, you've done lots of training, you've done lots of studying, you're in Facebook groups, you're asking questions, you know how to use tools, you know how to analyze products. What you've done over time throughout your journey is you, you've fundamentally, you've built your confidence. When you first started, like many of us, I remember very well making my first purchase, stumbling through the major systems, right? I was sourcing for the first time like you was. I was purchasing for the first time like you was. I was shipping for the first time like you was. And when it got to Amazon, I was like, is, is this worked? Is this the right product? Did I analyze that right? What, what tools? And back then, when I first started, we had Camel, 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 and Keeper was free. Do you remember those days? Um, back then, bit of a dinosaur now. Um, back then, it was, it's all about confidence. Now, the great thing about what we have nowadays is we have so many more uh, advanced tools, analytical tools, but it's all to do with, from a psychology point of view, it's all to do with confidence. Now, when we start thinking about, okay, outsourcing purchasing, by definition, this is somebody else being in control of purchasing. So this starts to bring in other um, other aspects that are super important. It starts to bring in trust. Okay? If there's no trust, will there be confidence? No, there won't. It starts to bring in competence. Okay? You've got competence in your business because you've been uh, sourcing, you've been reviewing, you've spent many hours, days and nights, you've been doing lots of work in your business You've developed your competence, you trust in yourself, and that, therefore you've got confidence. These three, from a psychology point of view, these are, as the saying would go, 80% of success is psychology and only 20% is mechanics. So this, first and foremost, is, conf is confidence, trust, competence. That is what we need to get to when it comes to, okay, I'm now going to outsource purchasing. Having said that, there's also this 20% here. This is from a, a, a psychology point of view and this is from a mechanics point of view. We also need to then develop systems. These are actually the nuts and bolts on how we can actually develop these so we know if we're going to outsource purchasing, 
we've got confidence, we've got trust, we've got competence. Okay, so this is where we start to develop systems that we can fundamentally build our online arbitrage business on. So for me, there's a number of things that's super, super important here. For us to build competence, we've got to start training, just like you did. We've got to start training, we've got to start um, uh, re recruiting a virtual assistant to, to recruit, maybe that's from the Philippines, from India, from different parts of the world. We've got to do some recruiting, we've got to do some, some hiring, some, some onboarding, and then we've got to have some fundamental systems that we're actually training on. Now the first thing, and the best thing that I would recommend, is what I call master sheets. Now these are Google Sheet templates, which I'm sure that you've heard of, um, and there's many different forms of Google Sheets. You can either build your own, there's different templates you could purchase, but master sheets are essential from the mechanics point of view and fundamentally the foundation of you being able to outsource purchasing. And the reason for this is because from a master sheet point of view, being able to gather all the information regarding the products that you're purchasing is key. All the, the buy falls, the sell falls, the margins, um, everything from the, um, the, the basket totals, how many uh, units that you're purchasing, what's the quantity that you're purchasing, the order number, the expected delivery date, all these things are essential when we start thinking about competence to train on, trust, which I'll share some stories in, in a couple of minutes here, and then confidence. Okay, so master sheets is essential. Another thing is what I would recommend, which I'm sure that you, you're gonna be using anyway, from a Google Drive point of view, the, f the folders in Google Drive that can start to collect documentation. This is again a very essential part because when you start to purchase, and I'm sure you're doing this yourself right now, you are listing different products. These are the products that I'm purchasing. I'm, pur I'm purchasing from this store and then that store. You're collecting all the information. You've got some order confirmations. And then from that point, hopefully you've got them referenced. You'll be able to save all the documentation, your receipts, your VAT invoices, for example, into a Google Drive folder. So if you ever needed the documentation for VAT returns or Amazon requests a, a, a document when it comes to um, authenticity claims, whatever it might be, you very quickly be able to find that particular product in your master sheets, find the reference based off the ASIN that it's in question, find the reference, go into your Google Drive, search for that Google Drive in, in that Google Drive, follow that reference number, and there you go you found it straight away, okay? The next thing is a number of sort of software tools. Software tools. These are your analytical tools, how you're actually reviewing products, whether that's from a keeper, for example, or some, um, some other software analytical tools that are out there now, or also from an accounting point of view, right? So you've got analytical, analytics, and you've got accounting. So hopefully you're using like a, a QuickBooks, for example. These are essential when it comes to building this because this all fits in um, from a quality control point of view, from a trust point of view, from a protection point of view. These all fit in really, really well because what this is gonna do is your master sheets, you're gonna be able to collect all the products that you want to purchase, they're all referenced, everything from uh, what the order totals are that can be actually cross-matched to your, the store, the store basket. Then we save that documentation into Google Drives for ready for if Amazon requests or your accountant requests. And then also you've got analytical tools to help actually do the analysis and you've also got accounting tools where that transaction that comes in from those orders that are placed, they should match what's in your master sheets, okay? So these, this is the 80-20. This is the psychology, confidence, trust, competence. This is the mechanics. Master sheets, Google Drive, software. 
This is basically what I was trying to do in my own business back in two, going into 2016. I had just quit my job. At that moment in time, I'd handed in my notice. Kylie was shipping in our, um, our warehouse was our living room at the time. I had a team of sourcing assistants. I was sourcing every day with the team. I was the one that was purchasing. But I realized that I wanted to, and we knew we wanted to become business owners, which means from a major system point of view, we can't have um, us, me and Kylie, in these, in these major systems. We had to develop a way on how can we get out of these. And I'd already done it with virtual assistants here. We'd already started to plan on how we can start to hire staff members to come and help us ship. And then my focus turned to this. And this is when I started to really wrestle for my own personal journey. I started to wrestle with, okay, how can I have the, com the confidence that a team member will know what they're doing? How can I have the trust? The trust, if I was to give my details, accesses to accounts, to a virtual assistant from around the world, how will I know that I can trust that person? And finally, from a competence point of view, I was thinking to myself, how can I, um, how, will they, how will I know that they're purchasing the right things? This then started to bring down into the systems of master sheets, Google Drives, and software, and different accounting tools and analytical tools, okay? So in the January, I hired what I call my purchasing manager, right? This is a senior assistant, a senior assistant, and I called this person my purchasing manager. Purchasing manager. Okay. I called this person a purchasing manager and I went through an, an eight month spell from January all the way to August going through how to outsource purchasing. And this was through three phases. Okay, this was phase one, this was phase two. And this was phase three. Now these, these three phases, now that I know them and now that I've experienced them and now I share them with you, I know that these work because, and I could actually condense them much, much shorter. But at the time I was struggling and battling with the confidence, the trust, etc. So first and foremost, when you hire a senior assistant, a virtual, a virtual assistant, you start to build your team. It's a big part of team building is that trust. It is sharing your vision. It is sharing your results. It is sharing your business. And really from a, a staff appraisal point of view, them being able to achieve the goals and visions that they have in their life by them becoming a part of your team, getting them involved in the journey. And my first senior assistant, I, was, I shared that with him. I shared what the goals were. I, I, shared, I shared that I wanted him to purchase for me. And then we got to work. Phase one was all about actually being able to review and know the difference between winners and losers. Okay? Winners versus losers. That was phase one. All I wanted to do is I wanted to train, I wanted to start developing processes, I wanted to start um, helping him. Why, what is the criteria of what makes a winner? Started to get on calls, started to do video, share screens, started to do video recordings, giving feedback, starting to review products from a sourcing point of view. All these products were coming into the purchasing stage the first thing that we do is we need to review. We need to filter out what is a winner, what is a loser. So that became my phase one. All I was doing was, did you want to go review these products? We've had these products come in from all our source and assistant team. Did you want to review them? Did you want to say whether they're winners or losers? And we'd gone through a, a period of time going through the basics of, okay, this is what tool we use. This is what, how, what sales rank is. This is how we analyze Keeper. 
that's what this means, that's what that means, this is where, how to find the number of sellers on there, this is what, what Amazon looked like if it's on the listing. Explaining the basics from a competence point of view, what a, an Amazon listing looks like and how we can review. This then allowed me to go through this phase where every day it was like, you're going to review, please, and um, let me know once you've reviewed, and then I can review your review. Because I wanted to see, what, are they choosing the right losers compared to are they choosing and, and spotting the right winners? And at first, it's one of those experiences where it was like, depends on how well you've trained them. If they're picking out all the winners and if they're picking out all the losers, the goal here is to build confidence. The goal here is to build trust. The goal here is to build competence, that they know what a winner is, they know what a loser is. And at some point through phase one, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna start matching your result. Your virtual assistant, your senior assistant are gonna start going, I've got 15 winners today, and you're gonna go, oh, I've got 15 winners today, we match, okay? At that point, once you're going through this phase, you're going to transfer and you're gonna naturally evolve into phase two. Phase two doesn't start until you match phase one. Phase two is then all about uh, the, the competence and the trust and the, um, the, the competence or the, your confidence from a quantity point of view, quantities and basket creation. This is now, okay, we're right with the winners, fantastic, you've got the right winners, and now it's a case of um, what quantities would you purchase for these winners? And they start to look at those, those products and go, okay, we want to try purchasing these and be in stock for the next 30 days. Let's purchase uh, six of these units. Let's purchase eight of these units. Let's purchase 15 of these units. Whatever it might be, we're, we're looking at the quantities and we're going, you know that they're, they're getting the right winners because they match, and then also, you're trying to match what they would purchase compared to what you would purchase. Does this make sense? It's a strategic way. What we're trying to do is we're trying to go through confidence, trust, and competence using the mechanics that we have. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to match, once again, we're trying to match you to your new virtual assistant, your senior assistant, your purchasing manager. What we're trying to do is go, okay, you've got the right winners, fantastic. You've got now the right quantities, amazing. Let's start creating baskets, okay? This is a, a really, really exciting time because what, throughout all this time, what is happening is you're getting more and more of your time back. I don't know about you, but after like, 12, 13 months of purchasing day in and day out, reviewing, purchasing day in and day out, I had what I would call now purchasing fatigue, right? It was like it was purchasing burnout, where I used to purchase, when, when it comes to the major systems, we used to have a goal, a KPI of, we want this by 10 a.m., okay? Everything's coming by 10 a.m., and then I would go through reviews, purchases and, and, and complete purchasing by early afternoon. But as the, month, as the weeks and months started to go on, what happened is, team were working fantastic, but my, my time of completing purchasing was just going later and later and later. To the point it was like purchasing fatigue. All right, I've got to go home, I've got to do that review and purchase. I've got to go home, I've got to do that review and purchase. Purchasing fatigue, which essentially makes you the bottleneck it made me the bottleneck hopefully um hopefully i'm explaining this well um let me know down below uh with a with a thumbs up if you are enjoying this it would really it would really help out the channel i would really really appreciate it um but what we're trying to do is okay the second phase is quantities and basket creation at that point we're now at a point where it's they're matching winners they're matching quantities and they're, they're rejecting losers. If you think about it from that point of view, it's like, great, I'm, I'm starting to build confidence with you because you've got the right winners. Great, I can see competence in you. 
you've got the right winners, the right quantities. Right, I've got confidence. Yes, you can choose the right the quantities. Yes, fantastic. I can I can I can see that you're competent because you've got the right quantities. Fantastic. You've got the right winners. You've got the right quantities. Now is the time in phase three is to actually allow them to do purchasing and documentation management. Manage, right? This is the time where you allow your assistant to actually start to complete purchases. Now, think about what this does at this point, moment in time. You've matched, we've covered phase one and phase two. We've got that confidence, we've got that competence, we've got that trust. We trust, okay? The, sec the, the third thing and the final thing when it comes to how do I let them purchase? Now, there's a number of ways that you can do this, okay? There's a number of ways that you can do this. This is where you, you can start to put in a number of different safety nets involved, purchasing rules, where you can say to your purchasing manager, okay, um, you could have daily budgets, please don't spend more than this, right? So you can see that. You can start to consider doing things like, if there's a product that is, or if you're gonna complete one order that's more than 400 pounds or dollars, please let me know so I can approve it. If, for example, there is a unit, if there's a, a one particular item that, I don't know, the, the, the buy for price is above 20 pounds, 30 pounds, or it's a high ticket, 50, 60 pounds, then that needs to be approved by me too. Okay, there's a number of safety precautions that you can put here before they place an order, please run this by me. But the majority of products may not. It just gives them the freedom, right? You're releasing the bottleneck to allow them to purchase. Now, from a safety point of view, there's a couple of things that, from a psychology point of view. Number one is questioning the belief of, um, if I give my, my details, my, account, my accounts, uh, PayPal, whatever it is, provide users to my uh, cards, my funds, well, my purchasing manager might purchase wrong. Well, we've covered that in phase one and phase two, so that's not an argument anymore. We know we've got the confidence here. What if they um, take off and, and, and just commit fraud, right? Okay, well, we're gonna use, there's lots of different protections nowadays through credit cards, for example, and if, if for example, they disappear, they've got your account, they've got your details, um, what would happen then is your credit card will be protected. You would literally say to them, it's, you know, it's not me. It's, um, please cancel my account. Please, they would investigate the fraud. And the truth is, throughout this time, you are building a relationship. You're building a relationship with a team member that is, if, if they were to commit this um, act of treason, if you like, First and foremost, I, would, I, I, I don't want this person in my business, right? I would rather them, if they're gonna do that, I'd rather them do it swiftly, quickly, so we can get rid of you. Let's move on. You're no good, you don't see the vision of what we're trying to do. But the truth is, when it comes from a hiring point of view, and a, team, and a relationship point of view, by the time I'd got to this point, you know, this was maybe three months, three months, six months, working day in and day out, you, you start to build trust, you build friendship, you start to build relationship, you start to build this, this professional um, uh, understanding between one another that you're building towards this bigger vision. You want to provide a promotion to them. You want to provide opportunity to them. They will then see where they want to be in their life and that would encourage um, a lot of motivation and encouragement, right? So um, the chances are then if you've built this relationship good enough, they're not, going to, uh, they're, they're not going to commit any type of fraud with you. And you would know about it straight away. How would you know about it? You would know about it from the mechanics. You would know about it from the orders on your master sheets, okay? So you know about it there. You would know about it from the documentation going into Google Drive, so you'd know about it there. And also, you would know about it from your accounting software that you've got. Because all the transactions that are electronically connected to all your accounts, immediately, 
as soon as you refresh, as soon as you log into your card account, you would know about it, right? You would absolutely know about it. And the great thing from this point of view is it starts to bring in, from a phase three point of view, it starts to bring in daily KPIs. It starts to bring in updates to you from a purchasing point of view where every day they can send you an update. I've purchased uh, this amount I've spent. I've purchased this amount of quantity. I've purchased this amount of ASINs. Um, the, this is the uh, overall performance in terms of percentages of winners versus losers. It brings in so many, um, from a management point of view, that you can start to control and know from an ownership point of view if things are going right or not going right. Is this making sense? I'm hoping, I'm hoping it does. This is the psychology that I personally went through because the vision was I need to outsource purchasing. I need to get out of these major systems. And I knew I needed to take this leap. If my business is gonna to go to that next level, I need to start giving freedom. I need to start giving responsibility. I need to start, um, uh, instead of holding the pressure, the burden on me, going later and later and later, being the bottleneck, I had to give, give, and I had to trust. I had to train. I had to get confidence in myself, competence in them, training back and forth, giving feedback, developing systems from a mechanical, from a mechanics point of view, master sheets, Google drives, accounting, really understanding that. Okay, I can see things in my business, my KPIs, I can check things. The, the trust, the confidence, the competence. And then it was time, okay, we're going, let's do this. And overnight, the business went to the next level. All of a sudden, I was no longer the bottleneck. All of a sudden, my, my virtual assistant, my purchasing manager was all of a sudden able to have the freedom, have the ability to go back to, we want to purchase at um, the KPIs. Let's get everything completed by early dinner time, um, early afternoon. All of a sudden, it wasn't 10 o'clock anymore where things were now out of stock, things were not able to be, get purchased. All of a sudden, the business went to life because I was no longer the bottleneck. And I had faced the demon, I had faced the, um, the confidence, the insecurities, I'd, I'd faced all this to develop the systems, to develop the competence that allowed me to make that step. I share that with you openly because I know how you feel and I know how, um, if you've taken that step already, I know that we have a common thought on this because I, I know that this is a big step for an entrepreneur to, to give an, uh, the, the responsibility out, especially from a financial point of view, because this is the security of your business. It's the make or break. It's the, it's the success and failure of your business. So what does this then allow you to do? And how, why is that super exciting? Because now, over the hours that you've been spending reviewing, purchasing, reviewing, purchasing, you're getting purchasing fatigue, what are you gonna do? You're gonna get to work, you're gonna start taking massive action, you're gonna start enjoying building the business again because it's like, oh my God, look at these systems, these KPIs, my team's on fire, great work team, we've purchased this. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna be a cheerleader to your team and you're also gonna get to work on your business. You're gonna start looking from a bird's eye view on the major systems. And then this is when the magic happens is this, this is then when I developed what I call now the growth and maintenance systems, which this is where you're now looking from the outside. You're looking on performance. How can you optimize sourcing? How can you optimize purchasing? How can you optimize shipping? You, you are now what I would call then the next level is what I call from a growth manager. The growth manager, this is when you're looking at your um, inventory health, your performance, your replenishing, you're looking at your repricing, you're looking at the, your accounting, you're looking at how do we get into wholesale, you're looking at so much because this is where you start going into what I personally love is the growth side of your business, the optimization side of your business, your waste elimination out of your business. This is where the magic happens. When you are able to take this step right here and outsource purchasing. 
fantastic. I, I loved it. When this happened, it was like, oh my God, why didn't I do it sooner? Um, I, I, still to this day, years later, purchasing managers still with us, building with us, so much trust, so much competence, so much belief, so much uh, teamwork, so much that we've been able to do is because of the team that we have and the trust and the re responsibility that I keep giving and keep giving and keep giving because they want the success just as much as you do. So this is the three phases of outsourcing purchasing. I would love to know what you think about that and I'd love to know down below if you've got any comments, if you've got any concerns, if you've got anything that you want to ask, it's not a problem. Um, I'm gonna have lots of great videos, lots of great insights on, um, really I've covered so much over the, the, the past, but I know you right now, you're gonna be at a stage where this is maybe the step for you. And then, the, and then there's so much we could talk about from a KPI point of view, from a, um, a, a training point of view, I have, different training programs now for our growth managers, purchasing managers, where there's, there's modules, the step-by-steps with actual criterias, um, uh, there's assessments. We actually developed assessments at the end of every module where we've been able to simulate winners and losers, right? We've been able to simulate these. We've been able to go, okay, we've, we know what a predetermined winner is, a predetermined loser is, and our purchasing manager training can start to go, okay, they have to select, is, is this a winner, is this a loser? Okay, it's a winner. Why is it a winner? Predetermined actual questions and assessments that can start to go and actually learn this training, this competence, this, um, this trust, it's, it's really, really is great. It's fantastic, okay, so, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. I uh, just love to support you on this journey. Um, I help you take massive action every single day as I uh, have done for the last four years on the journey. And uh, this was a significant quantum leap that I personally took in my own life. So I'm going to have some more videos that pops up right here, some recommended videos, because there's most definitely a free online arbitrage program that I have. There's also from a, a major systems, did this visually, a major systems uh, point of view, or even the, the maintenance system. So take care, keep taking massive action, good luck, and I'll speak to you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.